Keith and I are here today. We're going to replace some uh, sheep and goat fence uh, that was hard stapled, so we were getting a lot of slack in that wire. They'd done a great job on their braces, built good uh, braces at eight feet, and then uh, hard stapled the wire. So as those animals and the livestock would rub on the wire, they were seeing some issues with slack pulling through the hard staple. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and strip our wire back wrap around our end post and get a good tie back into itself using T-clips. Guys, I know it's a time saver and, and we see it quite often, but hard stapling the fabric to your corners is, is never a good idea. This, this high tensile product needs to be tied. Um, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. It'll save you a lot of repairs. But like Van said, they've got really good strong braces and that's the backbone to every fence. So we're just gonna show you guys a uh, little demonstration about this, this sheep and goat. Um, it's the Beckart S-Knot. All right, we'll get this wire stripped off and get ready and we'll show you guys how to use the T-clips here in just a second. All right, as you can see, Van and I have the stays stripped away and we've got this nice length of wire to terminate on our, on our posts here. Uh, like we always say, good braces and posts are the backbone of every good fence build. And uh, the braces are in really good shape and Van, what do you think the, the T-posts are on here? Uh, we definitely want a good backbone. These here is probably in 10, but you want to stay inside of 12 feet. And we're using a combination of T and wood today it's definitely fencing's a big investment, and uh, you know, just a little extra money and a little extra time can make all the difference. I mean, this guy, uh, they hard stapled, the wire slipped, it got loose, the, the animal pressure has been, has leaned the T-posts over. Um, I think we really, we're really gonna give him a good final product today. All right, we'll catch up with you guys here in just a minute. We're gonna terminate this end and get the wire rolled out, and we'll be ready for the install. We've got all of our product rolled out. We've got our opposite end down at our tie post terminated and we're ready to go, Van. All right, we're gonna get our, uh, get our fabric in our stretcher bar and then we're gonna start tensioning. So we'll just lay the fabric up into the bar. And it's real important to get the, to get the fabric square and there, every line wire needs to be under a wedge. If, if you don't get all the wires under the wedge, you're gonna have slack wires in your fence. The wedges in the bar are made out of pretty soft metal, so you're not gonna tear up the wire. Go ahead and knock them in. And then I'm gonna roll the fabric back away from our bar. Then today we're using standard chain walkers or stretcher bar pullers. And there's several styles out on the market. And you can use a cable puller. Uh, we just prefer these, they walk really fast. They're really strong. And just be sure that your chains aren't twisted. Then they just run down the chain. Now it's always good to have a partner right here so you can run the fabric as straight as you can. If you have to alternate, just don't go too many lengths at once. All right. 
So we got a little bit of a rise right here in our bars, trying to dig in just a little bit, but I think we will be okay. You just keep your fabric square. As you can see behind me, the fabric's already starting to stand up. So we're getting tension on the fence. And everybody, it's very important on high tensile to never stretch the fabric. If you stretch high tensile, you break the grain structure inside the wire and then you'll start causing problems. It'll start to elongate and then you have problems. And that's the beauty of high tensile. It just needs to be good and tight. If it's tight, it'll maintain its integrity through the heating, through the cooling, and you won't get slack wires unless something gives. So I think we're gonna go a little bit more. We've got quite a bit of flex in it. We wanna take some of that out. What you never wanna do is take away more than half of the height of these tension curves. And I like about four to six inches of flex between my posts. We've got a good snug fence. We'll tie it off and we should be good to go. We've got a good level pool here, Keith. That's right. When you're working through rough terrain, how do you kind of watch that as you go through on this? So I will always leave my stretcher bars and my pullers in, and then I will go back to my high points, secure my high points to the posts, and then pull down into the lows. That way, if I've got the fence a little too tight, or I need to take up a little more, I can tell when I go to pull that down in. But you're right, we've got a good flat pull here today. All right, guys, we're gonna strip a few knots off and uh, we'll get this terminated and we'll get back with you guys and trim this fence out. So we've got our fence tensioned up. We've got uh, a, a good load on the fence. It's rebounding nicely. And this Beckhart sheep and goat high tensile works really well for these animals here on this farm. Uh, it's also available in a two by four. And the two by four basically installs the same way. So if you see the Beckhart sheep and goat or the Beckhart horseman no climb, it's basically gonna, gonna install the same way, man. Sounds good. We got this tensioned up good here. So what we're going to do now is release the pressure with our stretcher bar pullers. And as we do that, you'll see a little bit of slack from the bar up to the end post. The fence will absorb that down the line. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that. We got our T-clips in. So we should be good to go here, Keith. Yep, so. that's the beauty of high tensile. And you'll be able to see it as he drops that slack back. The fence will just absorb it. And you can see so, we've lost we, less than one link. Yeah. And that, that little bit of slack that was left between the bar and the post has absorbed back into the fence. We've got good deflection, good rebound. Fence is in good shape, Van. Okay, Van's releasing that stretcher bar. Time to just knock the wedges out. Keith, while we're doing this, why do we always unhook the bottom stretcher bar or stretcher puller before we do the top? I don't want it to hit me in the head, for exactly. sure. <laughs> All right, we're gonna use the, uh, the Beckart Speed T-Post Clips and the Dell Fast Power Stapler and show you guys how we'll trim this fence out. So first part of trimming this fence out, like Van said earlier, we've got T-posts, we've got wood posts, and uh, we're gonna use the zinc aluminum coated clip from Beckart, and it's a T-post clip. It uh, wraps around diagonal around the T-post and then spins up with a drill chuck that you put in your cordless drill. So you just simply put the fabric up, cross it, bring the clip over to the web, and then place it inside the chuck and then just spin it up. Just breaks one end off, you can come back with your hammer and just knock that down, nothing will ever get against it. 
So we'll continue on down the fence getting this. Uh, we'll get down to the line posts and we'll try out the new Delfast power stapler. So we've got our wire tensioned up here, got everything ready. So now we're going to trim it out. So the way we're going to do that on these wood posts is use our Delfast. It's got an easy adjustment for your depth gauge on it, tool free. And um, so easy to use. We'll go ahead and staple this wire up here. As you see, as we work our way down here, we're going to staple the top, bottom two, and every other one in the middle. All right, everyone, this pretty much wraps up our installation for the Beckart Sheep and Goat and the Beckart Horseman. Uh, appreciate Van. It's been a good build. And guys, remember, when it comes time to buy your Horseman or your Sheep and Goat products, remember Beckart made in the USA.